Hi, I'm John Geckler for the Gibbs Singleton Museum of Fine Art in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and today I want to talk about one of Gibbs' pieces called I'm Your Huckleberry. The background you got to know is that Gibb was a Western junkie. He always wanted to be a cowboy when he grew up. He, of course, moved to Santa Fe to do Western art. And he would occasionally supplement his income, because he was usually a starving artist, by working as an extra at the Eves Movie Ranch making Western movies. So he was a connoisseur of the West and of Western movies, and one of his favorite movies was Tombstone. Tombstone had all the good stuff that Gibb loved, all of the contradictions of the human experience. They had courage and cowardice, they had romance and rejection, they had tr loyalty, treachery, and great gunfights. Of course, he loved that part too. So Gibb believed that any human being could go in any direction at every moment. You don't know what's likely to happen. I woke up on the wrong side of the law. Someone gotta help me. You would see love and hate, you would see loyalty and betrayal, you would see faith and doubt. Just two sides of the same coin. He used to always say, you can't have good without evil, you got to have something to compare them to. You can't have bad guys without good guys. You can't have good guys without bad guys. So John Henry Doc Holliday was the personification of that. And Gibb was the same way. Gibb could be the most charming guy you ever met. He was always the smartest guy in the room, but sometimes he was also a raging lunatic, and sometimes he was passed out face down on the floor. That was just part of his character. He lived every moment to the full, and he did what he was going to do, and he did it to excess. I woke up on the wrong side of the law. Doc Holliday, on one level, is an educated Southern gentleman. He speaks Latin and Greek. He's a dentist. In fact, he graduated from dental school at the youngest age possible. They had to wait for a while for him to become of legal age so they could give him a degree. And he was a gambler and a drunk and a stone-cold killer. And Gibbs saw no contradiction in that. Those were all just parts of the same guy. They were just facets of a personality. Wyatt Earp said that Doc Holliday was the most skillful gambler, the nerviest, speediest, deadliest man with a six gun I ever saw. God, I know I done plenty wrong. So Doc Holliday was not only famous for the gunfight at the OK Corral, he was part of that whole great Western scene that Gibb loved. And think about all the pieces that were inspired by that, you know, Gibbs. Oh my gosh, Billy the Kid, and Geronimo, and Tombstone, and Black Jack Ketchum, and, 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 and. So Doc shows up in Cheyenne, he shows up at Deadwood, he shows up in Dodge City, and then of course what we know him for is showing up at Tombstone at the OK Corral with the Earp Brothers for that great showdown. The title comes from that great moment in the movie Tombstone where Johnny Ringo has called Wyatt Earp out for a gunfight. And Wyatt asked Doc Holliday, can I take him? And Doc Holliday says, no, you can't. And so they're at the designated meeting point for this gunfight, and Johnny Ringo steps out and says, well, let's do this thing, and Doc Holliday steps out of the shadows, rather than being Wyatt Earp. Ringo is shocked. Holliday says, I'm your Huckleberry. And of course, in the next moments, they have the gunfight. Doc Holliday shoots and kills Johnny Ringo, which is the beginning of the end of the group called the Outlaws. Notice the detail work. So Doc's got two pistols and a cut down 12 gauge shotgun. And that's historically accurate. He was ambidextrous. He was known to walk into a gunfight with a gun in each hand. In fact, the story is that he and Wyatt Earp became friends because Wyatt got cornered by a bunch of angry cowboys in the Long Branch Saloon in Dodge City and Doc stepped through the door with a pistol in each hand and stood him down. And he was capable of doing that. At the faro table, he was a sporting guy. In a gunfight, not so much. He was there to kill you. And think about his cut down 10 gauge. It's got two three and a half inch shells, each of which is gonna throw 18 33 caliber slugs at you. Just the thing you need to clear out a room or a corral. Gibb said Doc was kind of a legal outlaw. He said he wasn't really a good guy, but he wasn't really a bad guy. And sometimes he would wear a badge. Sometimes the Earps or Bat Masterson would deputize him when they needed a serious gunfighter to help him through a situation. The thing about him though, 
Gibbs said was that he could cure you or he could kill you. And you might not know until it was too late which his intention was. So thanks for tuning in. I'm John Geckler for the Gibbs Singleton Museum. Mm-hmm.